FL Studios Edison, I'm gonna try to do it in under 15 minutes. For those of you that have messed around with it, you know there's a lot here, so I'm gonna pack it in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get to everything and give you a complete tutorial in 15 minutes. So opening up Edison, most of the time, I'm on my sample library here on the left, and I'll have my sample, and I'll just right click it, edit an audio editor, and now we're in Edison. Uh, if you're using Edison, so Edison is a sampler, but you can also use Edison to record stuff. Um, it's really great for recording vocals. Uh, if you are like doing comping, you're doing multiple takes, Edison's really great for that. And a lot of times there, you'll want to go to your mixer, and you'll use Edison on an insert. But here we are looking at Edison for sampling this little, this little synth line here. A little synth line, and I'm just going to kind of go through everything that you can do in Edison. So let's start at the top left. This is the link here, link uh, slave playback to host. So what this does here is it ties in Edison to the rest of the DAW. So when I have it linked up and I hit play up here in the main DAW, we hear the sample. If I unlink it, hit play, nothing happens because there's nothing in the playlist. This here is our loop button. So if I left click and I drag and I make a loop, play it, it plays once. If I hit loop, it keeps looping. Here's my pause, stop, play, these two buttons right here. This here's my scrub button, right? So I can, uh, let's kind of zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to control and then the mouse wheel. Scrub, you actually left click, you hold it down, and they just and staying right there, you just move your mouse wheel gradually to the left and the right. And we can scrub a sample. Look for transients, things like that. There's our stop button. Here's our record button. Uh, like I said, generally this is when we're going to be using Edison from the mixer. Uh, there's a few choices here. Typically, I do it. I I do it on play. Um, and what that means is, and you want to link this to your host, but you'll have a song. Say you have a song going here, right? Like let's just say I have something in the playlist. I can and say I just need a vocal on bar two, right? So I can highlight. I can right click and highlight bar two. And then in Edison. I can um, I can just record, I can do multiple comps just over this one bar when I hit record on play in Edison. Um, so that's kind of cool. Let's take a look at uh, some of the, this functionality on here. Oh, and real quick, this is, um, this is if you just want to record, you can record for one minute, three minutes, five minutes, 60 minutes, and it'll cut you off. You can also record by size, so you say, I don't want to exceed 50 megabytes. So if you want to save disk space, or you might accidentally keep it recording and walk away from your computer, there's some cool things there. Um, otherwise, you can just leave it set on for forever. Here's where you load and save. Um, I generally keep this on 32-bit stereo, as you probably will too, but maybe you want some things in mono. And here is our cut, copy, paste. A lot of this you can do it with the same shortcuts as you do in Word, but let's just highlight an area, say cut, now it's cut, and I can paste it, and there it is down at the end. This tool here uh, pretty much has everything, this wrench pretty much has everything that you can do um, in Edison. You know, normalization, fade in, fade out, reverse the sample, the claw machine, gating, you can even do EQ and reverb right into the sample itself, not in the mixer. So that's kind of cool. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but most of these I'll talk about when we get down to all these over here. Um, but let's just do reverse real quick because I don't, I don't think that's in the other section. So, well, let's, let's, let's just do this area here. And we'll just reverse it. So that's cool. Here's our zoom tools, which you're probably already familiar with in the regular DAW. With our undo button. There's our claw machine here. Uh, claw machine is probably better if I had a drum sample loaded up, but you can hit it to a, a period of a beat and say you'll trash every fourth beat, and you can add in some compensation stretching. And, and you kind of get like a pulsing sort of sample. Versus there's your kind of wavy stretched out sample without the claw machine. So claw machine's cool. I don't use it too often, but it's cool for some drum stuff. Here's our normalize button, so this will normalize the waveform. 
makes it bigger, right? Normalizes it to, I guess, 0 dB, I think. Let's undo that for now. This here is the trim side noise. Uh, I can't really show you how to use this until we have some quiet areas. So let's, let's try all our fade tools real quick. Let's take this, let's add a fade in here. And let's add a fade out here. And let's just hear that real quick. So now, this trim tool here, I can use it to actually get rid of quiet areas. So here we go. I have a loud area, I have a quiet area. Hit the trim tool, and it chops off all that quiet area. So there it is, pre-trimmed. There it is. Whoops. There it is, trimmed. And the fades we talked about. Here's where we can run our scripts. So I can... Um, if you had a script script that you wanted to use, you can you can do that here. Um, I don't really run scripts like Java. Um, I don't, really don't know how, but you can do FX like a bit re bit reduction if you want to make some like video game kind of sounding music. That can be kind of cool. You can also do some um, generations like saw sign generators for those of you that work with like massive FM8 serum those kind of things. Um, but not going to get into all of that right now. This here is really cool, right? So let me reset this here. Let's just let's just hear our sample again. This here is really where you do most most of the stuff that you want to do with samples, which is pitch shifting and time shifting, right? So there's a regular sample. I can pitch shift it up, and look up here. This is it's telling you how many semitones. So we just went plus four. So if we were at C, we went up C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Now we would be at E. And then here's your fine tuner for little subtle adjustments. So I can go from, I can go a little sharp of E. Also a multiply here, if you, if you want to just go, I want to go 90% of that pitch. I want to go 110% of that pitch. So that's all your pitch stuff. Here's your time stuff here. So let's hear kind of a short sample right now. Let's make it real long. We'll make it real long. Let's see. Make it real short. You can also punch in a time here. So that's kind of cool. Um, E3 generic versus resample. Resample, let's just let's just reset the sample again. Let's hear it again. So E3 generic, right? If I change the pitch up or I change the pitch down, it'll make the sample shorter um, or longer time-wise. So if I make the sample high pitch, it's gonna make it shorter time-wise. If I'm on resample really short. If I make the pitch low, I'm on resample, and it's real long. E3 generic keeps the time the same throughout, regardless of what you do to pitch. That's cool. So E3 generic is nice if you want to keep the timing the same. Otherwise, if you want the sample to become longer with a, sh with a lower tone, or higher, or shorter with a higher tone, then you want to go to resample. Over here we have like a convolution reverb. Let's make it real wet, bring down the dryness. Blur is very similar. This is kind of good for if you're like patching together samples and doing some crossfading. You can also kind of do a pluck kind of thing. Um, so there's some choices there. We have an EQ. So kind of doing a high pass filter there. Uh, this here is like a noise gate, so let's just, and sometimes it doesn't give me these, these options don't pop up the first time I click it, let me hit it again. Might, it might just be that and use the acquire the noise profile. There we go. Okay, so it's got the profile. You can see I can. If I set the threshold really high, not a lot of noise comes through. Uh, markers, I'll get into in a sec. So these are, if you want to put down your own markers, like I can put a marker down there. I can put a marker down here, marker one and two. I can also take an area and I can just have it auto mark. Uh, where FL Studio thinks a marker needs to be. So this tool here, this loop tuner is really 
really cool. Um, for messing with waveforms, it's really just, I kind of just like to experiment with this if you kind of want to get like a tremolo going uh, on sustained notes particularly, it's really cool. And yeah, there's your save, and then these two functions here, right, so we have this edited sample. If I wanted to, whoop, let me pull Edison back up. If I wanted to take this sample and I wanted to um, just send it to the playlist, there it goes. Um, if I want to click and drag it to the playlist, I can do that. So let's uh, look down here. So I can scroll, scroll in, and we have the scroll bar here. Here are our envelopes here. So look up in here. You can see which each envelope is. There's an uh, editing pan. There's the volume, stereo separation. Let's just do the volume one for now. So we'll do like a big crescendo. Let's start over here. Whoops. That's a big crescendo, so that's kind of cool. Over here, there's a few things. There's the spectrum analyzer, markers. This is the freeze here, so I can't can't actually do any editing. I can only scroll the snap function that we talked about before and another thing you can use with envelope markers here where um, you only you don't affect all the markers at the same time um, so that's pretty much an overview of Edison um, let's just talk about recording so if you're recording vocals you would do it up here um, and I think I already said you would do it on play um, let's say for example that you're you're gonna be doing a um, you have a drum sample like a folk rock kit here. This this will be good because I think everything will be nice and separated. So this is kind of cool. So I can zoom in on, a, on an area. Let me turn my snowflake off here so I can edit. So I can come in here and I can make this my loop, right? I can go ahead and put markers down on each of these spots. Let's add a marker. Let's add another marker here right before each of the hits and now I can highlight this whole area and I can go over to my step sequencer and I'm going to say replace this with the fruity slicer so now I have fruity slicer open and I'm going to take I'm going to take this so I'm going to take this area with all its markers that's highlighted I'm going to click and drag it into the slicer and check it out. I'm going to leave Edison now. I'm going to go into the piano roll. And all those individual drum hits that we just looked at are now here. And I can make my own drum pattern. So there's Edison for you. A uh, lot of functionality, a lot of cool stuff you can do. You can record vocals, you can splice up drums, you can do all types of sampling with pitch and timing. You can add EQ and reverb right onto your sample. You can do reversing. You can do normalization, cutting, pasting, um, adding markers, you know, matching up to the beat of your song. Lots of choices. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like it, and I'll be back with some more FL Studio videos in the future.